How long is the sourdough starter supposed to take? We are doing sourdough my way. You know, you don't need a good starter to make a good sourdough. Nor the muscles of Arnold Schwarzenegger. Nor the inside or smell of some sort of hipster baker. All you need is four ingredients and a teeny bit of patience. But enough talk, let's get started. For this recipe, you're gonna need three and a half cups of bread flour. And yes, you must use bread flour. Not all flours are the same. If you end up using all-purpose flour instead of bread flour, you're literally gonna end up with a limp biscuit. Hashtag, don't be a greatest. Next, add one quarter teaspoon of yeast, followed by two and a half teaspoons or, or almost a tablespoon of salt. Now let's mix thin dry ingredients together. And our last ingredient, a cup and a half of room temperature unfiltered water. Hey, can I use that water? No, you can't. In addition to turning the friggin' frogs gay, tap water also contains minerals that are not healthy for yeast. So, unless you want the world's thickest cracker, stick with plain filtered water. So, let's just add this water to the bowl. Once the water's added, using a rubber spatula, let's get to mixing. Finally, cover it with some saran wrap. Once you wrap the thing in saran wrap, let it rest and rise for somewhere between 19 to 24 hours. Yeah, I know, that's a lot. We need this much time because two things. One, make the dough rise and give it that signature sourdough's taste. Second, this is a no-need recipe. That tough tug sourdough is known for, well, that's the gluten baby. And you can get gluten two ways. Knead the living hell out of it, or use a tiny amount of yeast, and let the gluten develop naturally. So yeah, there's no need to worry. Ow! Ugh. Ugh. I deserve that. It's the next day, and if all goes well, your bread dough should look like this. Now, let's turn this blobby mess into a dough ball. First, remove the saran wrap. Dust the top with flour. And kind of claw it away from the bowl like this as you rotate the bowl. I might need some more flour down there. Ah, see how it's nice and stretchy? That's because we let the gluten develop overnight. So yeah, there was no need um, no reason to worry. Now we're going to do this into a bowl. So, in order to do that, funnel it through your fingers like this. And pinch it to stretch the outer membrane. Like so. Grab a kitchen towel like this, lay it flat, and sprinkle a liberal amount of cornstarch on one half of it. Grab our ball of dough. You might have to reform it into a ball. Bring some more cornmeal on the top. Cover it and let it rise for two hours. While that's going on, a five quart Dutch oven like this and put it in a cold oven. Turn on the oven and set the temperature for 450 degrees. And if you hate America, the number you're looking for is 230 degrees Celsius. Once the two hours are up, Take the lid off the Dutch oven, dump the bread loaf in here, put the cover back on, and set the timer for 30 minutes. And 
once the 30 minutes are up. Remove the lid. Put this back in the oven. And let it cook for 15 more minutes. Yee. Once it's done, take it out of the oven and place the bread on a wooden cutting board to cool down. Gotta let it cool down for about 10 minutes. Now that we let this thing cool, we can finally cut into it. And voila! There we have it, folks. No kneading, no starter, no problem. I swear, tryptophobia has never looked more appetizing. Well, this has been Chase Cutting Kitchen. I'm CRJ, making cooking fun and meaning it this time.